Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my presentation today is a description of the bone, shell, and stone items from the redwood box cache that we have identified as ornaments. A uh, total of 21 ornaments were found in the cache. Uh, all the ornaments were in the west box, uh, many of which were contained inside an abalone shell enclosure uh, that was part of the west box cache. Lisa was describing that a little earlier. Um, we're referring to this as the jewelry box. Um, Amira and Nice uh, presented all of the uh, contents of the jewelry box in the poster session on Tuesday. Uh, this is the complete collection of ornaments. Uh, we have two abalone shell rim pendants, four bird bone pendants, a uh, soapstone pendant, and two soapstone pendant blanks, uh, an ochre stained pectin shell pendant with a perforated umbo, a red abalone pearl pendant, um, a pair of eccentric and highly stylized uh, circular shell fish hooks, uh, which we're calling ornaments, uh, five soapstone beads, three abalone shell buttons, um, and as Lisa said, one of those buttons was too fragile to be photographed, so it's not shown here. Um, Uh, the ornaments were almost evenly distributed between the West Box and the Jewelry Box. Um, Eleven ornaments were found in the West Box and ten were found inside the Jewelry Box enclosure. All these ornaments have attributes uh, that are considered typical to the Channel Islands. Um, almost half of the ornaments are pendants of various types. Um, here we see the five West Box pendants, uh, abalone shell rim pendant, uh, two bird bone pendants, the uh, steatite pendant or substone pendant and pendant blank. Uh, these are the jewelry box pendants uh, and an another uh, shell rim pendant, uh, two similar style bird bone pendants, uh, the pectin uh, with the perforated umbo and an abalone blister pearl pendant that is really gorgeous. Uh, most of the pendants are of um, this sort of elongate style with either uh, one or two perforations on the proximal end. Um, here we have the West Box uh, bird bone pendants, the dorsal and ventral view. These are um, uh, based on the concavity, uh, probably about uh, made from a bird, probably around the size of a cormorant. Uh, these are the jewelry box pendants, uh, bone pendants, um, also identified as uh, avian. Uh, these are a little different from the previous two. They are, they're denser and well polished. Um, these appear to be biconically drilled. The others uh, do not appear to have uh, that biconical drilling. Uh, they're a little less con concave. Uh, based on that, we're uh, assuming that these were made uh, from a bird probably about the size of an albatross. Uh, there is distinctive cordage where on this one here. We're going to see that in the next slide. Here's the cordage wear. Uh, this is a really interesting wear pattern. Uh, it's an offset single perforation, and the cordage was apparently wrapped around the back side. Um, it's been suggested that there was an additional perforation uh, originally, and um, that might have broken off or worn through and perhaps this pendant was reworked and uh, uh, reshaped, and you can see the little curve here that's unusual uh, from the previous pendants. Um, there's just no way to know that, but uh, that is an interesting wear pattern. Uh, soapstone beads. Uh, we have five soapstone beads, um, three, uh, uh, two beads, and the one in the center has a center perforation. Uh, this is a biconically drilled uh, bead uh, we'll see the biconical drilling on that. And then we have a, a, a ring bead. Uh, here's a shot of the perforated tube bead, uh, center perforation. And we don't see any wear pattern around this. Um, there is wear on, on one of the sides of, these two, of each of these two beads. And you can see that here. And we see this on all three of them. Uh, this is a soapstone ring bead. A soapstone doesn't occur on San Nicolas, uh, so this material either was traded in or the, um, the beads themselves were imported. Uh, we just don't know. Um, 
the closest source of soapstone to San Nicolas is Catalina Island, but we also have um, soapstone sources uh, on, uh, on the mainland. Thanks. Uh, this is a possible arrangement of uh, three of the beads uh, as they may have appeared on a strand. Uh, Amira figured this out based on the wear patterns. Um, it's important to note, however, that, that, that one of these t larger beads was inside the jewelry box. One of them was in the sandy matrix of the west box. Uh, the jewelry box wasn't fully enclosed and sealed like we find um, in other sites uh, where you have a, a sealed enclosure. So it's possible one of these fell out. Uh, we just don't know that, but we are considering this possibility. Uh, this is the biconically drilled bead. Uh, this one's a little different um, uh, type of soapstone. It's a little darker. It's clearly biconically drilled. Uh, we have the hourglass um, shaped drilling pattern on the inside. Uh, the other three two beads were fully drilled out. So this one is distinctive from those. Uh, we don't see any wear patterns on this. Um, you know, perhaps uh, it's unfinished or it was strung uh, between two other items. So that's why we don't have any wear. Uh, the shell ornaments are really interesting. Um, all of these are, um, have attributes of typical Channel Island style, and they're all made from local materials that would have been readily available on San Nicolas. Uh, here we have the two um, uh, abalone shell rim pendants. Uh, this one was in the jewelry box. This was in the matrix of the west box. Uh, these both have a single perforation on the proximal end. Um, here we see a closer shot of the, um, of the perforation. There is some visible striations here. Um, I don't know if that shows up. It's kind of hard to see. Uh, but we do want to take a closer look at that and see if we can determine the method of drilling. Uh, we have two abalone shell buttons, actually a third button that's not um, uh, featured, as I said earlier. Um, these are you know, possibly uh, uh, ear buttons, uh, or they would have been applied as a sequin to a garment or another item. Uh, here we have an uh, ochre stained pectin. Uh, it's an Argo pectin uh, with a perforated umbo. And the ochre um, is really ground or rubbed in. So that's very interesting. And here are the pair of, uh, of fish hooks. We're calling these ornaments. Um, they're highly stylized, as you can see. Um, again, these are made from local materials, probably red or black abalone. Um, and the basic shape is typical to the California islands, except for that, uh, that barbed and ornate design. Um, there's no visible cordage wear, so I didn't include these with the pendants. Um, and we don't know if they had been worn that way. But uh, we're definitely assuming that these were not for fishing. I don't think you want to get that hung up on a rock. Uh, this is a sketch of an ornate fish hook. Uh, that was collected from San Nicolas. This is part of the Malcolm Rogers collection. And I think it's interesting just to compare uh, this sketch to one of our fish hooks. Um, I would imagine this, this is probably, um, whoops, this is probably ornamental as well. We're running out of batteries here. Uh, this is the larger of the fish hooks, the dorsal and ventral view. And here we have the smaller fish hook. Uh, these are left-handed hooks, uh, both of them, which is typical of San Nicolas Island. And here we have um, our blister pearl pendant. Uh, this has two perforations um, at a 90-degree angle. So on the superior, uh, uh, you know, from the top and on the lateral end of the side, you can see that the, the perforations. And then there also appears to be uh, cordage wear around the top of this. And here we see the lateral and superior view. And you could see the, the perforations, and they're almost uh, uh, grooved as well. And then you have the cordage wear wrapping around the top. Uh, there's also a crack that you can see here, and that runs on both sides. I don't know if that was from the, the drilling, um, but that's very interesting. They're, they're fairly delicate. Uh, that is very delicate. Um, 
we're just beginning to analyze the ornaments uh, from the box cache. Uh, we have many questions about this collection. Um, it's interesting that the ornaments uh, were uh, completely contained in the west box, and we have none in the east box. Um, so we intend to further investigate the, the entire contents of both boxes uh, to see if we can reveal some other patterns between artifacts and raw materials included with them. We plan to continue to investigate museum collections uh, to see if we can find some archaeological and ethnographic analogies of these ornaments elsewhere. And as I indicated earlier, we'd like to determine the source of the soapstone uh, used to make the tubular-shaped beads. And we also intend on conducting some replicative studies. Uh, there were some metal items and raw materials found in the cache, as well as items that may have been used to manufacture tools and other artifacts, such as the burnishing stones. Uh, perhaps we can determine whether or not objects in the cache, such as the metal nails or the burnishing stones, uh, could have been used to manufacture um, any of the formal artifacts found in association with them.